Kind of hits the seven twenty eight twenty two. I now call this meeting <laughs> into order at seven p.m. and welcome. For the audience here tonight, the City of Glendora utilizes a hybrid meeting format to allow for participation both in person and virtually. In consideration of others and business conducted tonight, please silence your phones and any electronic devices and refrain from speaking unless recognized. Again, this is a public meeting for the community of Glendora. We appreciate and respect your participation here this evening. And at this time, we'll go do, we will do roll call. So Madam Clerk, can you please conduct roll call? Thank you, Chair. At this time, I'll conduct an oral roll call vote and request that each commissioner respond with the word present when their name is called. Commissioner Gerber is absent, so Commissioner Burrell. Present. Vice Chair Kuyumjian. Present. Chair Louis Borchet. Present. So let the record show three members are present tonight. Thank you. At this time, we are gonna go ahead and stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, and I'll ask Commissioner Burrell to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner Burrell, and thank you, everyone, for being here again. Reordering of and additions to the agenda. Does anyone wish to reorder or add to the agenda? Moving forward. At this time, I'd like to go ahead and open public comment. So this is the public comment period. I now invite members of the public to address the Community Services Commission. Speakers are limited to three minutes, speaking once, both on and off agenda items. All questions should be directed through the presiding officer. This is your time to speak uninterrupted. If you are in attendance, Please fill out a speaker card and submit it to the recording admin before the close of the public comment period. Once recognized, speakers should advance to the podium and state your name and subject matter you wish to discuss. If you're participating via Zoom, select the raise hand icon in Zoom before the close of public comment period. Once recognized, you will receive the request or a request to unmute, state your name and the subject matter you wish to discuss. I invite those in attendance to speak. Are there any public comment cards? I have received no public comment cards and I don't have anybody on Zoom other than just staff, so. Okay, well, thank you very much. At this time, we'll go ahead and close public comment, the public comment period. Commissioner statements and reports. I invite each commissioner member to, each commission member to provide a statement of report. So go ahead, Commissioner Burrow, we'll start with you. Um. Uh, Earth Day was on April 16th. Yep. Yep. No, nope. 22nd. Okay. It was on the 22nd. It was a though. really great, big turnout. Everyone seemed to have a great time. Kids were super excited as usual to do the scavenger hunt. And it seemed like a really successful event. I don't have anything to update from uh, homeless services, homelessness services. I always for, I always miss a, a syllable in there. Um, no updates for that uh, this month, but that's all we have. Thank you for that, Vice Chair QMG. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair. Um, a report from the uh, Glendora Trails Council. Um, uh, let's see. A discussion was had about uh, the expense about their budget um, for the last two remaining uh, months in the budget cycle. And they allocated expenditures uh, in accordance. Uh, the last winter hike was on April 29th um, at Little Dalton. And summer hikes will begin. The first one will be June 24th um, at 8 a.m. at Big Dalton Canyon Trails, uh, July 29th <clears throat> at South Hills Wilderness Area, and August 26th at Little Dalton Canyon. And also summer evening hikes will begin June 13th at 7.45 p.m. Um, at South Hills Wilderness, Wilderness Area. I suggest we do one of those, maybe as a, oh, that'd be fun. As a um, commission. Uh, July 11th is the next one, and that's at 7.30 at Little Dalton Canyon. And August 8th 
um, at 715 at Big Dalton Canyon. And those are all led by Dick Sweeney, who's the president of the Trails Council. Um, and, and then in addition, um, a discussion was had about the Glendora bike facility, bike trails. Um, they had some input in, uh, in regards to that. And also I too also would like to commend the great work on Earth Day. Um, attendance looked great. And also the pamphlet that was mailed out this this year was that a new I believe that was a new thing this year, right? All right. I know that one. we had done it in the past and we got away from it and uh, returned to it. And that's that why great. I believe that's what helped our attendance. Yeah, that was great. I mean, and so much information in there. And so I used that to schedule my time. Um, and that's it for my report. Awesome. Thank you very much. Um, this past two months has been a really busy month or busy few months, uh, wonderful activities. And Mal, I, I agree with you. The Earth Day activity was very well planned. My kids had a wonderful time. There were jumpers, there were miniature ponies, there's food, different things. And Ikea was even there. That was pretty cool giving out good stuff. So uh, thank you to all that put that on. You can tell that the work um, was really done. I also brought my kids in to do um, photos for passports. So that was a resource I didn't know we had in the community. It was easy to do right here, done. So our future trip thanks you <laughs> for that. Uh, so I appreciate that. Um, following that, we had the Harper Award at the Volunteer Luncheon in the La Fetra Center. And that was beautifully hosted uh, we had a delicious meal with uh, Spanish theme, tacos and all kinds of goodies, quesadillas, lots of drinks going around. Good drinks. I say drinks, <laughs> macaritas as we call them. <laughs> uh, but it was wonderful to have that and to give out the award to someone who was very selfless, who did not initially want to be acknowledged in the presence of um, this audience for his work. Steve, uh, we're congratulating him again for, for his effort in the community. Um, and then we had Mother's Day. So for those of you who are mothers or have mothers in your life, all of us do, wishing them a happy Mother's Day. That just happened. Looking ahead, we've got something coming up with the Older Americans Luncheon. That'll be next week on the 25th. So lots going on. I did check in with Debbie uh, regarding the La Fetra Center and the council. And there are no plans to have a meeting in this present time. Um, and she gave me the good reason. She said, there's no problems. So there's no meeting. And I was like, okay, I get it now. So um, we, we talked about maybe starting something up without the need of problems to solve, just to get together. So looking forward to that. And that concludes my uh, report. And I want to go ahead and invite a director, John Aguirre, to provide any of his statements and reports. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, first, uh, something real big for our department. We are changing our name from community services to recreation and human services. Um, everybody thinks of us as parks and rec. Um, so we're going to go to recreation and human services. We've kind of been getting um, in with community development. It, people get mixed up there. So that will be starting uh, July 1st when we do our new budget. And that, so we are uh, making that transition. Uh, our summer guide went out. We started uh, online registration May 1st. Um, and we, it just took off. Uh, uh, dirt camp, um, it's all full for all eight weeks uh, and large waiting list. Um, we also expanded that from 80 students to 100 to allow more, um, but that is all full. Um, a lot of other little classes are full. SWIM is doing very, very well. Um, we had a total transactions for the first two weeks of over 3,000 transactions, and total participation uh, registered was over 5,000. And for May 1st through May 15th, we brought in uh, $330,000 in fees there um, and that. Um, one thing's coming up that's new is Kid Palooza. We're selling the wristbands at um, here at the main office and down at the teen center. Um, it is $15 pre-registration, $20 the day of event. 
It is June 2nd, 5 to 8 at Finkbeiner Park. Um, also, uh, movies in the uh, or concerts in the park will start June 25th on Sundays uh, in the uh, Larry R. Glenn Bandshell at Finkbeiner Park. And then the LaFetra Picnic is Friday, June 9th. Um, and they have the Habit Truck coming. It's $10. It starts at 11.30 to 1.30. Um, Ann will bring up the Crather 20-year anniversary. Um, so we have a lot of events coming up. Um, this is the busy time for us, but it's also the exciting time. And that concludes my uh, report. Thank you for saying that and sharing those updates. Good to know uh, there will be the name change. Uh, one thing that I forgot to mention was the pickleball ribbon cutting ceremony. That happened on April 11th, and that was exciting. A few of us commissioners got a free lesson in pickleball. Some of us for the first time playing ever, ever, ever. And we were spoiled. The cookies from Crust and Crumble, I understand, were delicious. And uh, we had people from outside of the city come and actually ask us if we could reach out to their departments to get something going. So I thought that was really cool. We will have another... Um... Um, ribbon cutting probably in the next two to three weeks at Finkbinder Park. Our restrooms will be back online and we'll add another four pickleball courts um, in phase one there. And then we'll be working on phase two uh, with some concrete sidewalks, um, the redoing of the surface uh, at the playground area and some other little things. So that's uh, probably in the next two to three weeks, we'll be sending you guys or in the next week, we're sending you an invitation out for that another uh, ribbon cutting. Sounds good. Bring your playing shoes. We're ready to play. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, so going to the consent calendar. Items on the consent calendar will be enacted by one motion without individual discussion unless the commissioner has requested it be removed for separate discussion. Does anyone wish to comment on item number two? Okay, so I'll request a motion. We have a motion by Commissioner Burrell and seconded by Chair Louis Porche. I'll open this up so you guys can vote and do an oral roll call vote. Commissioner Burrell? Yes. Commissioner Gerber is absent. Louis, I'm sorry, Vice Chair Kayumjian? Yes. Chair Louis Porche? Yes. Motion carries 3 0. New business South Hill Bike Park Design Update. I invite Acting Management Analyst Kelsey Fay to report. Good evening, Commissioners. Tonight I will be presenting an update on the South Hills Bike Park Project. So a little bit of history on it. Um, back in early 2022, um, it was discovered that there were unauthorized bike jumps that were being constructed within the South Hills Wilderness area. To gather input from the community, a meeting was uh, a meeting took place on April 9th, 2022. During this event, residents were encouraged to express their thoughts and ideas on various aspects related to the project through vision boards. Spanning approximately 250 acres, the South Hills Wilderness Area features hiking trails and multi-use paths that connect to South Hills Park and the dog park. Introducing a bike park to this area will serve as a valuable enhancement, creating a fresh recreational space accessible to all visitors. In late 2022, the city entered into a contract with Avid Trails to develop pre uh, pre preliminary plans for a bike park. Representatives from Avid Trails conducted a thorough examination of the site to assess its existing conditions. This survey aimed to gather all essential information required to ensure the bike park's design is accurate and effectively planned. To gather community input, a survey was generated using SurveyMonkey and shared, the, shared with the public through various channels, including social media, emails, and signage posted at the South, South Hills trailhead, Trailheads. A total of 344 individuals participated in the survey, with the majority of responses expressing positive feedback. Among the respondents, 60% expressed their desire for a mountain bike exclusive trails, and 75% indicated their interest in additional multi-use trails. Numerous requests were made for specific mountain bike trails and features within the bike park, such as pump tracks, jump lines, skill zones, and inclusive opportunities catering to riders of varying skill levels. 
The Land and Water Conservation Fund is a competitive program that provides matching grants to state and local governments for the acquisition or development of public outdoor recreation features and areas. Funds allocated to California are administered by the Department of Parks and Recreation Office of Grants and Local Services. The estimated available funding for this grant cycle in California right now is approximately $30 million. Cities have the opportunity to request up to 50% of their project expenses. The projected cost for this project is around $2 million, therefore we're seeking a grant of $1 million to help support this project. The deadline for submitting the grant application is June 1st. On May 9th, a resolution was presented to the City Council, which approved and endorsed the application for funding. Regardless of whether we receive the grant funds, the City remains committed to exploring additional grant opportunities to secure the remaining funding for this project. Um, you'll see here on this map, uh, the red circle shows where the proposed bike area is just off of Glendora Avenue, north of the 210 freeway. So this slide and the next are conceptual designs that have been submitted to us by our designer, Avid Trails. We do have with us tonight on Zoom, Jay Hoeschler, who will be talking a little bit more about the technical side of the project. Um, so Jay, whenever you're ready, I have this slide and then the next slide as the... Um, the bike trail. If you want me to switch back and forth, just let me know. Go ahead whenever you're ready. Okay. Good evening, commissioners. I'm Jay Heschler with Avid Trails. Thanks, Kelsey. Um, we a quick background. Avid Trails is a national company. We work uh, all over uh, all over the country doing trails planning, but a real specific focus on bike parks. And so uh, uh, I live down the street from you guys in El Segundo uh, and am always happy to do projects much closer to home. As I said, we work all over the country, Utah, Texas, uh, Florida, other places. But so uh, we visited the South Hills Park um, site. It's a great location for this bike park uh, concept that we have. And typically with a bike park, we actually look for a, a fairly level site for some of the programming. Um, and I should also point out that the programming that we have uh, we've we are recommending here is very much based on the public survey that uh, we worked with the city on. So the questions that went out on the survey were things like, what kind of uh, what kind of bike riding do you do? What sort of features are you interested in? We showed some examples. We showed some pictures. Uh, Lendora has a very robust, uh, high school mountain bike team, and they were uh, instrumental in kind of giving their thoughts on it. So um, what you see here is a conceptual plan, and uh, it's about an acre in this one particular site. Uh, the, the, the key components of this bike park are uh, what's called a pump track. And I'm, I don't know if anybody, if you guys are familiar with the pump track, uh, the idea is that it is designed with hills and berms, and you use your body weight to compress and pump through this track where you can propel yourself without pedaling. And so that's why it's called a pump track. And they're a lot of fun. They're, uh, anybody who can ride a bike can ride a pump track, which is really great. Uh, we have a beginner track. Uh, this the tiny oval that you see just north of the proposed parking area. Uh, that's a beginner intermediate track. And then we've got an intermediate to advanced track, which is a much larger track. By the way, these are uh, we're recommending that these pump tracks be done in asphalt so that the maintenance to the city is much lower. Um, they, they just hold up better when they're uh, paved in asphalt. Uh, also within this park, we've got what we call jump lines. And so there's beginner, intermediate, advanced jump lines, and there's shorter trails that uh, allow riders to uh, practice jumping in a safe environment. And then uh, there's a, a return trail. There's room for spectators. Uh, there's a pavilion that we are recommending for some shade. Um, there's uh, you know some more niceties that make it a, a great experience for people that are not just riding bikes. And I'll stop now and ask if anybody has any questions about what you see here. Um, it might be more for uh, city staff, but I see the, the parking lot. Is that um, road, I guess, that leads to the parking lot? Is that the 
closed gate off of Glendora Avenue? No, this one is uh, up on that hill. Um, we would, um, the road comes up and then off that road is another dirt road or it's asphalt a little ways and then it becomes a dirt road um, and they would make another road in there for that parking lot. Oh, okay. Um, right. and, and, and you'll see a little bit of that on the next slide where it's a wider view. Um, oh, my other question real quick was about, you said all ages. So really, is it like like the idea, even families with like kids learning to ride a bike, that's a good place to do that? Or is Abs this kind of a... Absolutely. So, so uh, an, an important part of our design process is creating, and I'm sorry, can we go back to the previous slide? Um, a big part of our, uh, our design philosophy is creating experiences where somebody who's just out, starting out on a bike can get comfortable, get gain confidence, learn some skills. I mean, we've got these little things to balance on that are also fun. So it's a combination of play, but also uh, uh, actually getting mountain bike skills. But then what these features and these different trails are progressive in nature so that you get comfortable on the beginner thing. You do that a couple of times. And as you get better, you try the intermediate. The, 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 the obstacles and the features get a little harder, a little more challenging. And, you know, someone may work on that for uh, weeks and then they move up to the advanced track. And so we try to keep we try to create an environment where it is challenging for the best riders, but it also really encourages new people to come in and try it out. Thank you. Um, yes. How many parking spaces is allocated here? Well, in, in this case, we just have a small lot. Uh, in the, in this particular case, it shows about 15 or so spaces, okay. but the reality is, is that the service road that John described, uh, not only the road that comes out of that gate, uh, yeah, and up the hill, but then around the corner, there is gobs of street parking, uh, you know, side parallel right. parking. There's a lot of room for parking. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and um also the long trail the the mountain biking trail that's about i understand six miles yeah if we, if we want to uh flip ahead to the next page um if you guys can see this graphic pretty well um the the dark gray line is all of south hills park and so the bike park that i just showed you is in the uh in, in the uh, the west corner there, just that tiny little area where those two little icons are. Um, so you've got a, a, a giant area with South Hills Park. And if you can see on the map, all the yellow and brown lines are your existing trails. So um, some are actual trails. Uh, many of them are maintenance roads that are you know used as trails. You know, the the, the spine trail that goes along there is a uh, it's a uh, utility access road, but a, a lot of people use it to hike on, and it's a great resource there. In the survey that was done, uh, we asked a lot of questions specifically about the bike park and just that programming, but we also asked some bigger questions. Um, if you had if if you had more trails, what would you do with them? And one of the big answers from a lot of people was. Let's have more trails that are um, uh, less conflict with uh, with bikers and hikers. Um, let's have more cross country trails for the for the mountain bike team. Um, let's have more multi use trails uh, for both hiking and biking, and maybe even some specific trails that are just for biking and just for hiking. So you have a lot of space there to kind of do a lot of these things. So we looked at the topography, we looked at the whole site, and we realized that we could create, we could design a trail for this park that is the maroon trail, the kind of burgundy color that's a loop that goes all the way around. And yes, it's close to six miles. Actually, I think it's about five and a half miles. Um, well, actually, it's five and a half miles, except for the, you'll also see the green, the blue, and the black trails down by the bike park. We're also recommending that we do some downhill flow trails there that that empty right into the bike park. And so that's what brings it up to six miles. Got it. And also, what's the elevation 
uh, difference is from low to high. Well, how, how so, many feet would that be? So that purple trail, um, I don't have the data right in front of me, but the, the, the entire site is very hilly. It goes oh, up, right. it goes down. And so um, if I were able to draw my, my mouse on here for you, I, I would show you that coming from the uh, bike park, you go up the green trail, which is a climbing trail. It's a multi-use trail, a, a multi-directional. You'd climb up the green trail and it's climbing, climbing, climbing. And that's probably a, uh, uh, you know, a, a hundred foot or so elevation change. Uh, close to the top of the green is one of the first uh, towers. And so that's the top, roughly the top of a hill. And then, it, then the, the purple trail drops back down and goes down probably another hundred feet. And then it climbs back up another hundred feet, and then it goes back down another hundred feet. So over the course of that five and a half, six miles, you're probably uh, looking at a couple thousand feet of elevation gain uh, cumulatively. Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Okay. And is the purple multi-use as well and more yes. multi-directional? Correct. Okay. All right. That is correct. Yeah. And you know, one of the things that we looked at when we studied your trails. Um, you know, you do have uh, some trails on the north side that connect to the uh, to the existing dog park uh, down there. Right. Those are some of those are hiking only, which is great. Um, some of the other multi-use trails, because you don't have that many trails, I think they get congested, and you know, the bikes and the hikers um, have to coexist. And so, by adding some trails, it it relieves a lot of that congestion. Okay. And then once, let's say the project is, a, you get the green light, how long uh, is the time to get it finished? What time uh, how long would it take? And is that a question about the bike park or the trails or maybe All both of, of those it, things? The whole project. Yeah. So the, the bike park itself, the pump tracks and the jump lines, that's probably a three month build. Um, the, tr the purple trail at five miles um, is probably another two, three months for that. So, you know, call the whole thing six months. Some of those things can be happening concurrently, perhaps. Now, was this supposed to happen in phases or? Uh, this this is uh, yet to be determined and we would work with, uh, with the, the uh, public works department to figure out the best way to phase that. But uh, our team, we do full design build and, you know, we can, once we get mobilized, we can, we can keep moving and, and build the whole thing in one shot. That also depends on funding. Right. Of if course. we get the grant right. and the whole bit, then right. it moves that project up the line. Got it. All right. Well, thank you. Sure. Of course. And okay. I don't have any additional questions. Jay, I have one question. The yes, degree of slope um, for these trails, oh, if you can great, go over. Great question, John. So if you guys are familiar with the existing trails out there, some of them are extremely steep. They'll go straight up a hill. That's what we call a fall line trail. Um, a lot of the, the maintenance road, the, uh, the, the uh, utility access road that's out there is designed for trucks. And trucks can go up a 25% slope with no problem. Uh, it's not always fun to do that when you're walking or riding a bike. Um, so we, our philosophy on uh, trail design is to aim for a much lower grade. So this entire purple line that you see, uh, you see a lot of squiggles, you see a lot of switchbacks, and that's very intentional because what we've tried to do is keep to a five to 7% uh, maximum slope. Uh, it's a much more comfortable slope to ride a bike or walk on. And maybe most importantly is it doesn't become a, a, sh a water chute when it rains. You know, you guys have seen those steep trails get rutted out every time it rains. And so our trail design tries to avoid that wherever possible. Okay. All right. So thank you for that. Uh, this is exciting, especially I know to Vice Chair Jin, who enjoys the hike. So looking forward to seeing how this turns out and hopefully Good. there will be an opportunity to proceed forward. Thank, Thank you for that. You're and welcome. I will go ahead and at this time ask uh, for a motion. So we have a motion by Vice Chair Kuyumjin. Do we have a second? A second by Commissioner Burrell. So I'll open it up so you guys can do the vote and then I'll do an oral roll call vote. Commissioner Burrell? Yes. Vice Chair Kuyumjin? Yes. Chair Louis Borchet? Yes. Motion carries 3 0. Thank you.
Teen Center's 20th anniversary report. I'd like to invite Superintendent, Recreation Superintendent, Annie Warner to come and report. Thank you. Thank you, good evening. Um, it's a privilege to be here this evening and highlight the Teen Center's 20th anniversary. Um, as many of you know, um, the Teen Center will be celebrating its 20th anniversary on Friday, June 16th in a brief ceremony at noon and a lunch to follow. This will be a day to celebrate and honor the late Tim Crowther and the numerous contributions he and his wife Donna left to our community. Lieutenant Timothy Daniel Crowther was hired by the Glendora Police Department in April of 1972. Tim was well known and loved not only by his co-workers in the city, but throughout the community through his, the people he served and the kids he coached. Um, he served on many organizations, including this um, board of commissions, including president of the JCs. He served twice as a police officer association president, coordinating council, family community education, and a commissioner in the 90s. Tim exemplified service to his community. He was well loved. Um, and he loved working with the Glendora's youth and coached Little League, soccer, and basketball. He also coached um, the Glendora High School varsity golf team. He was passionate about serving the youth and having a center dedicated to serving the team population in Glendora. He and now Director John Aguirre toured many cities planning and dreaming of a, of a facility for Glendora. Then Mayor Larry Glenn initiated a Mayor's Youth Task Force in June of 1995 and pushed for a facility um, and grants to provide funding. From that, the Glendora Skate Park opened in June of 1999 with the Teen Center to follow. <clears throat> um, the city was awarded a grant in 2000, and the city hired the late Glendora resident Norm Nichols as the architect for the future Teen Center. Tim had sadly passed away in October of 1996 of a heart attack and never saw the completion of the facility that he had dreamt up for Glendora. The city felt it was only fitting to name the building in his honor, and the building broke ground in April of 2002 and was dedicated on March 1st, 2003, and on June 21st, 2003, the building was finally open to the public. In attendance was Tim's wife and his children, Dan, um, and his daughter, Dana Edwards, and their families. Um, <clears throat> over the past 20 years, the facility has served our residents well and the youth of Glendora. It averages 55,000 people per year with its heaviest use during Glendora Youth Basketball and the summer. The 15,000 square foot facility has a game room, computer lab, two meeting rooms, a teen lounge, and gymnasium. It is used by teens after school, meeting spaces for local sports leagues, recreation classes, community events, and more. We wanted to take this opportunity to celebrate the Crowther family. Donna Crowther passed away in 2001, and she played a vital role in keeping Tim's legacy alive with the Crowther um, Youth Award through Glendora Coordinating Council, um, with a golf course. Um, and so many people we still find out, we didn't know this building existed, or you offer this. And so we wanted to take this opportunity to celebrate them and to invite the public out to um, an event again on Friday, June 16th at noon with a free lunch to follow. And to for us to highlight all of the youth activities we will be offering this summer, um, barbecues every Friday, fun trips, um, programming during the day. Um, and so we hope that those in, who can make it will attend. Thank you. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer anything. Thank you for that. I'll, I'll start. This is exciting and it's great to hear the history and thank you for sharing that. Uh, some of us that came before our time uh, in Glendora. So I'm thankful that you shared that. Will there be an RSVP process for people who want to go? Yes, we are uh, going to be sending out uh, invitations um, and then you can RSVP back to us. Community wide. Yeah. And please bring your children. Okay. Like there will be okay. kid activities. There will be food. There will be on an ice truck. There will be cookies. There will be activities and things for them to do. So, so more the merrier. That, right. Yeah. Say less lock, lock is the word the they house. say. Stay less. That's yeah. You had me at the, you had the kids at the cone. Yeah. Cone. Perfect. Um, I'll turn it over to my fellow commissioners and vice chair. Any questions? Thank you. Okay, so thank you very much. Appreciate it. And I'll go ahead and request a motion. So a motion by Chair Louis Porchet. Do we have a second? 
Seconded by Vice Chair Kuyumjian. I will now open up the vote. I'll conduct an oral roll call vote. Commissioner Merle? Mm -hmm. Vice Chair Kuyumjian? Yes. Chair Louis Porsche? Yes. Motion carries 3-0. All right. So the strategic plan update for the 2023 20 through 2025. Um, and I invite management analyst Kelsey Faye back on up to report. <laughs> You're popular. Yes. <laughs> okay, so tonight I will be presenting to you an update on our strategic plan for the years 2023 through 2025. So the city has transitioned to a multi-year strategic planning process in conjunction with the two-year budget. The strategic planning goals are directly linked with the budget because the thought behind it is what gets funded gets done, or at least that's the plan. Each department and division within it creates their own goals and tasks to complete during the budgeted year, which coincides with the current strategic plan. There are seven main goals, most of them existing from previous strategic plans with minor changes, and one new goal, which is to enhance community engagement and presence. At the strategic planning meeting, City Council adopted 49 objectives to be completed or worked on over the next two years within various categories, including economic development, financial, employees, modernization, infrastructure, homelessness, and community. Within those 49 objectives, there are over 185 detailed tasks that will help employees track progress and stay on task. During this meeting, the city also updated its vision statement, which gets updated every few years. Within the extensive strategic plan, I'll focus on highlighting a few essential goals and objectives relevant to our department. Specifically under the objective of implementing strategic economic development, our department has a few key tasks. These tasks include facilitating investment in city parks and facilities to promote greater access and use, use to improve quality of life in the city and to update the park's master plan. These two tasks are interrelated while planning park projects. The city is collaborating with the Glendora Unified School District to create a Memorandum of Understanding, or MOU. This MOU aims to enable the city and the school district to share and utilize all facilities and fields, ultimately enhancing the overall experience of our residents. A significant portion of our department's employees work in off-site locations, which is why we actively engage in the goal of improving and maintaining the city's infrastructure and facilities. Working in these buildings enables us to promptly address any necessary improvements as they arise. Another task under this goal is to develop a South Hills Wilderness Park plan with a focus on turning it into a regional attraction for passive and active outdoor recreation, including a potential biking facility improvements, which as I spoke about earlier is already starting to become underway. One of the biggest goals for our department is to implement strategic homeless solu homelessness solutions. The goal over the next few years is to enhance our services so that we can provide to individuals experiencing homelessness and create more partnerships with other public agencies that have the same goal. Staff is working on exploring different funding opportunities to help fund the ongoing outreach initiative. The newest strategic planning goal is to enhance community engagement and presence. During the next few years, staff will be working on different tasks to further this goal. Staff is already starting to plan a multicultural event and explore different options for volunteer opportunities. And this concludes my strategic plan update. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. No question for me other than a comment. It was a pleasure to attend that strategic planning meeting. Um, it was said to be the longest in the history of Glendora. So I'm really thankful that it was chosen on the day I was there. <laughs> Um, and I'm looking forward to the cultural celebration. That was a special um, addition to the roles and responsibilities. So thank you for the work and sitting through those wonderful talks. Vice Chair. My, I don't have any comments. Thank you. Thank you for the report. Uh, good job. I read the the actual attachments on the agenda and you condensed that because I read that whole thing and I was like, I'm not sure what I'm looking at here. <laughs> so you did an excellent job making that make sense. Um, so thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, that's uh, we had a two day uh, uh, 
summit on strategic plans. So I just got back um, with all those tasks and that we're trying to uh, break it down into what will get done this year um, and then what is in our second year and stuff. So we do have uh, a huge uh, job in front of us, but we're trying to get as much as we can done um, in that. And that's going to be a huge push for for all departments uh, throughout the city. Thank you for that. I know our community um, is also probably excited about a 4th of July celebration. So I imagine that's creeping at the top of the priority list. Well, that's <laughs> one that is not funded at this time. Oh. Uh, we did get the money for the, uh, I know it's on there, but we did get the money for the multicultural event. Nice. But the um, 4th of July event, we're in talks, but nothing has been funded for that event. We will see. <laughs> Funding pending. The cultural pending. event is May of next year, um, in this fiscal year, but in May. Okay. And the uh, 4th of July has not have any money at this time. Okay. Well, we know that with the success of our Halloween and other events that we're bringing in people from well outside of our local area, I am hopeful that the city does get that funding. We, it's well-deserved. So thank you for that. And we'll go ahead and request a motion at this time. So we have a motion by Vice Chair Kuyunjian, seconded by um, Commissioner Burrell. I will now open up the voting and do an oral roll call vote. Commissioner Burrell? Yes. Vice Chair Kuyunjian? Yes. Chair Louis Borche? Yes. Motion carries 3-0. And the Capital Improvement Project, CIP Program, and Budget Presentation. We'll go ahead and in invite Ms. Kelsey Fay back on up. <laughs> Hello again. This is my last presentation of the night. Um, so now I'll be presenting the Budget and CIP Projects for fiscal years 23-24 and 24-25. So what will be presented tonight is what will be going to council for approval on June 20th. There will be a special city council meeting, which will be a budget workshop starting at 4.30 p.m. that day, and then another special meeting at 7 p.m. where they will vote to approve the proposed budget. So there have been a few personnel changes since the last budget presentation. I'm going to go over just a few of the more notable ones. Um, the former management analyst at the LaFetra Center has now been reclassified to a human services and outreach coordinator. This position will be primarily working with the unhoused population of Glendora. This person, uh, the person in this role will also be working with seniors and highly vulnerable adults and will con uh, conduct outreach activities, housing navigation, and service coordination. The part-time recreation specialist two position will be assigned to be field attendants throughout the week to oversee field rentals at Louis Pompey Memorial Sports Park and Finkbeiner Park, as well as picnic sites, tennis courts, pickleball courts, Big Dalton, and Big Tree rentals. The additional hours added for the part-time recreation aid position will bring back the Parks and Playgrounds program. This is a program that we're bringing back after not having it for many years. There will be staff at Finkbeiner and Gladstone Parks that will have equipment to loan out, such as basketballs, pickleball gear, ping pong equipment, and more. Our goal with this program is to encourage residents to engage more with our staff and stay up to date with the latest city events. We believe this will foster stronger connections between the community and the city, which also coincides with the strategic goal to enhance community engagement and presence. The operating budget that's being presented to council for each division for the department has taken into account um, inflation rates for goods and services that have been rising, and the revenues are also expected to increase due to an increase in facility rentals and potential increase in class offerings. Um, something that changed since this uh, PowerPoint was created um, just this week was uh, they decided to um, split LaFetra money um, and the homelessness account money. So there's actually going to be a new division that we're going to be presenting. Um, so LaFetra will stay human services and then um, any budget related to um, outreach uh, will be in our community outreach division. Um, so that will be all the um, homelessness outreach and programs for that. Um, here you can see a breakdown of how our department is funded by funding source and where our revenue goes to. 
Uh, we're mostly funded out of the general fund, but we do have some funding coming out of Prop A Transit and Measure E for the new budget cycle. Uh, most of our revenue does go into the general fund, and that comes from payment for classes, facilities, and picnic rentals. We do have a few other revenue sources, which includes Measure A Maintenance and Servicing Money, which is a reimbursement program through LA County where they pay us back for some of the maintenance on the teen center since it was originally built with Measure A funds. You'll see that under the 2023 to 2024 budget for Measure A, there's a substantially higher amount than any other year. That's because we will be receiving an annual allocation from LA County that we've been saving up over the last five years in the amount of 920,131 and 31 cents. That we're looking to use that money to install shade structures over the seating areas at Louis Pompey Memorial Sports Park. There are several projects that have been completed over the last year, including the inclusive playground at Gladstone Park, pickleball courts at Dawson Park, and the conceptual designs for South Hills Bike Park. The Capital Improvement Program is updated periodically to address the changing needs, priorities, and financial condition of the city. The Louis Pompey Memorial Sports Park artificial turf design and installation is ongoing and construction actually started this week. Artificial uh, turf will be installed on fields one, two, four, and five, and the project is anticipated to be completed before the middle of November. The Finkbeiner Park Improvement Project is currently in phase one, which is the construction of the tennis courts and resurfacing to include one tennis court and four pickleball courts, as well as the remodeling of the bathrooms. Phase two will include resurfacing of the playground area and will address pathway connections around the park. There are also a few projects that were slated for previous fiscal years, but they did not get completed and are hopefully due to start this fiscal year. These projects include LaFetra Center building improvements, Teen Center building improvements, and Gladstone Park improvements, um, which originally the Gladstone Park improvements uh, did include the splash pad, but that's still on hold. So we're hoping to put a shade structure um, picnic area like we have at Finkbeiner Park also. Um, the new capital improvement projects that have been proposed for approval are the shade structure and scoreboard installations at Louis Pompey Memorial Sports Park, new scoreboards at Sandberg and Goddard Middle Schools, and construction for the South Hills Bike Park. Funding for the shade structure installations will be from our Measure A annual allocation, and staff is looking to secure grant fund to fund, fund the South Hills Bike Park project. Um, like I said in the beginning, all of this will be going to City Council on June 20th for approval, um, so nothing mentioned here tonight is final just yet. Thank you for your time, and I can take any questions or comments that you may have at this time. Thank you. I have no questions or, com or comments, but other than thank you. And Vice Chair? No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Yeah. Okay, and we'll request a motion. Motion was made by Commissioner Burrell. Do we have a second? A second by Vice Chair Kuyumjian. I will now conduct an oral roll call vote as well as open so you guys can do the vote. Um, Commissioner Burrell? Yes. Vice Chair Kuyumjian? Yes. Vice Chair Louis Porche? Yes. Motion carries 3-0. Thank you. And moving forward with the Older Americans Month and La Fetra Center special events. I invite Community Services Coordinator Rachel Arose to report. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. Um, so every May, the Administration for Community Living leads the observance for Older Americans Month. This year's theme is Aging Unbound, which is about finding opportunities to explore diverse aging experiences and discuss how communities can combat aging stereotypes. So every aging experience is different and the LaFetra Center encourages older adults to embrace diverse aging experiences by offering a variety of activities and services. Some older adults seek to maintain physical fitness, participating in dance classes and exercise classes. Others seek out new cultural experiences and knowledge, participating in day trip excursions, the International Community Club, sharing memories, or the Glendora Genealogical Group. Many older adults participate in our computer class and the Learn to Use Your Apple Products 
classes which teach beginner, intermediate, and advanced skills to learn your device. One of our most popular and fastest growing groups, Journey Through Grief, helps older adults of all backgrounds and experiences work through their grief, whether it be the loss of a job, pet, spouse, or child. Services such as our legal clinic, notary service, YWCA case management, and nutrition program help older adults obtain essential services for free so that they can age with dignity and security. Every participant at the LaFetra Center has a unique aging experience, and every participant deserves to age without negative stereotypes around physical ability, technology, social status. Uh, and many of the programs at the LaFetra Center emerged directly from an unmet need in the community, and most of our programs are run by older adults themselves within the community. So we're proud to be a meeting place for people with a diverse array of aging experiences, interests, and ability levels. Um, our Older Americans Luncheon will take place on Thursday, May 25th from 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. This luncheon is an opportunity to honor the participants at the center and the various ways they remain engaged in our community and the ways that they combat aging stereotypes, just as the Aging Unbound theme suggests. Um, we have 90 participants registered for the luncheon, which is about 30 more than we had last year. Um, so we're expecting a pretty full house. At the luncheon, attendees will enjoy a catered lunch from Plaza Produce, raffle prizes, a musical performance from our very own Sing for Joy group, and the Older Americans Proclamation from City Council. So that concludes it. Does anybody have any questions? Um, I've noticed that, and it's sort of related to this, I don't know what group, I think it's the stroke group has a like sandwich board that they put out. Yes, they and meet every Wednesday. I think that's like the best idea. And I don't know if it's maybe like a low cost thing we could deploy like for the LaFetra Center for all the groups or something like that. But like, I just in the last two, every went, or Wednesday now, I couldn't remember what day it was. Uh, I notice it right away. And uh, more so than, you know, referencing the the mailer that comes, especially for like our older citizens. I feel like that is such a great, like genius idea so yeah out on foothill yeah, yeah. we can t well I'll talk to other groups about doing that I mean the strokes support group is one of our larger groups um so that was all like their own idea and plan um so but I've definitely encourage other groups it, to do the same super it's so it's they just set it like on the corner of foothill and like I don't know is that Minnesota Minnesota, uh, Minnesota. Mm -hmm right there um and so yeah I on the day of the group I don't know what time they meet but like I would be driving by and I just kind of like it was very eye-catching it was very easy to read and I just thought for that population that seems like a really simple solution to kind of get a little bit more of the word out about the different events uh question on registration or RSVP are you still accepting RSVPs for the event um, not from participants, um, because we are basically at capacity for the room. Um, normally, we'd be able to take more, except as you can see, the Sing for Joy group, um, they're having about 40 people, so, and some of them are in you know, mobility devices. So that whole first section of the room will be for them. Um, so we're kind of at capacity, unfortunately. It's a good problem to have. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one thing you may have mentioned, I didn't hear you say it, but that caught my attention at the volunteer luncheon, tax services for free in the city of Glendora for our residents. Don't want to put it out there if we're not still offering it. But when I heard that, I was like, whoa, I'll be seeing them next year. So yes. according to them, it is not age-based. So that's another. Right, 18 and older. So yeah, as is, as are most or all of our programs. So thought that was fantastic. So um, I love what you said. I loving, uh, loved hearing you say aging with dignity and security. That's truly uh, a goal and meeting the unmet needs of the community. So um, bravo and thank you for that. Thank I'll you. be seeing you next week. Perfect. Thank, thank you. you. And I'll go ahead and request a motion at this time.
So we have a motion by Commissioner Burrell and seconded by Chair Lewis Porsche. I will now open up. Commissioner Burrell? Yes. <laughs> Vice yes. Chair Kuyumjian? Yes. Chair Lewis Porsche? Yes. Motion carries 3 0. Wonderful. And the selection of fall 2023 activity guide cover. This is where it gets kind of, you know, nasty. So, you know, put your hair in a ponytail now. Let's get to it. <laughs> Good evening, commissioners. Tonight, we would like to bring to you the covers for the fall 2023 activity guide. So this is cover option A. Cover B. And cover C. And then this is all three of them together. We would like to ask that the commission discuss and select the cover for the fall 2023 activity guide. This concludes my report. All right, so these are all wonderful options. I say B. The other <laughs> Me too. Other, unless, unless, unless those are actual like residents in our classes. I don't think I they think are. They are stock photos. They look like stock photos. They're super pretty, um, and like the backgrounds are so clear. I think and I homogeneous think, is is a word too. Yeah, they look. I I I like B. Yes, I like B. Of the options. Yeah. It, well, no, no it's already anymore. two to one. So it <laughs> sort of is, sort of isn't. I like that it brings attention to hey, there's a center, and so it's great advertising for La Pedra. Did you have a different opinion? No, no. Okay. Yeah, I, I'll go with B. And David called. He said B also. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so do we have a B. motion for David. selection B as the fall 2023 activity guide? And at this time, I'll request a motion. Oh, oops. Okay. Yeah. Nope, I'm you're a, fine. Oh, you're, oh, nope, you're fine. You're fine. Fine. So we have a motion, motion. by Commissioner yeah. Burrell, seconded by Vice Chair Kuyumjin. I'll now open up so you guys can vote and do an oral roll call vote. Commissioner Burrell? Yes. Vice Chair Kuyumjin? Yes. Chair Louis Parche? Yes. Motion carries 3 0. Madam Chair, that's one thing we need to do a better job in our department is take photos of our events mm -hmm. and that so that we can produce our own uh, people on our on our brochures. Noted. Um, the volunteer luncheon was uh, photographed by community, I mean, uh, by Lindsay. So we got. She took pictures, so maybe that's something to consider. But setting it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Thank you for that. So we'll move forward with the discussion of canceling the Community Services Commission meeting for the 2023 summer season. <laughs> what? Okay, so I'm by I'm by Megan Stone to report. Tell us you want to you don't want to meet. Okay. <laughs> Traditionally, the Community Services Commission has elected to go dark for one summer month. Per resolution CC two zero one nine dash zero four, which states that the reorganization of each city council appointed board, commission, and committee shall occur at the first regular meeting in July of each year. If you do choose to go dark in the month of July, the reorganization of chair and vice chair will occur at our August meeting. Staff is requesting the commission allow us to either go dark in August or September to accommodate any commission members pending vacation plans. On this slide, you will see a list of upcoming commission meetings as well as the meetings that council has decided to go dark. Oh. Mm -hmm. So if you'd I, like to discuss and decide on which month you'd like to go dark. As per last year, I vote for August being dark. The second day of school is rough. Yes. So we're in agreement. August was, was dark. So that, so now we need to choose, say yes to the other one as well. Right? No, I think oh, no, just, just the one? one. Yeah. Right? Wait, I thought. No, it's just... yeah, okay, we're just fine. canceling one. They just, oh. Those are our oh, options. Those are options. Yeah. Yeah. August 8th. Get no, August 17th. I mean, right. That's what I said. Okay. 
What? The bottom one what city council it? has oh, the bottom, yeah, bottom city two. council yeah. meeting. Sorry. <laughs> Eyes. Okay. We'll take yeah. August 17th, August. please. Yes. For 500. <laughs> yeah, for 500. Okay, so do we okay. have a motion? So, yes. Thank you. A motion by Chair Louis Porche, seconded by Commissioner Burl to go dark August 17, 2023 right. for the 2023 summer season. Okay. Yes. I will now open up so you guys can vote. Commissioner Burl. Yes. Vice Chair Kuyumjin. Yes. Chair Louis Porche. Yes. Motion carries 3-0. Thank you. Okay. Um, commission staff closing comments. I invite the commission and staff to give closing comments. Go ahead um, and start, Commissioner Okay, Burl. so my closing comments for the month. Um, we'll be, be changing our commission name. That will be something that I will talk with a city manager and assistant city manager. Um, it looks like we probably will go to a Recreation and Human Services Commission instead of the Community Services Commission. Our name does, yes. We're we're making that change July 1st. Right now, it was not with the commission because our foundation will stay the Community Services Foundation, um, but we will check with the commission. Um, I've heard from a lot of new neighbors and residents um, about the events that they're coming to and told a new friend that moved here and they came to Earth Day and their kids had a great time. Um, and uh, she also then, I was talking to her, uh, she had never been to the teen center and she went to buy her kid Palooza tickets. And she was like, it's so nice. I didn't know this was here. So like all of the events that are in full swing, everyone's, um, I hadn't been to the teen center regularly uh, for a while either. And just the parking lot and the golf course and everything. It's so nice right there. It's such a nice facility. So I'm glad that we'll be uh, celebrating that next month. Also, lots of excitement around the, uh, Stephen's not here, but the transportation changes in the village and all of the new things going on there. People are getting very curious. And um, I don't think, I've talked to a lot of people who haven't quite yet figured out that the like street stuff is like temporary to decide to be permanent. So like, it will look nicer if that's what sticks, but that's, people don't really get that. Um, and oh, lots of excitement in the elementary set about Kid Palooza and Dirt Camp. I've been trying to make sure all of the parents with Kid Palooza know to bring chairs and blankets and water bottles and uh, be ready for live music while our kids run amok uh, in, a, in a safe, contained environment with activities. So I'm very much looking forward to it. Um, and then uh, huge excitement around all of the summer activities and classes and dirt camp and um, the jockeying to see which friends are going which week and all of that stuff. Um, but I just, another shout out to the staff, our, our staff run classes are just so amazing. And so um, yeah, the, the more of those, those are my favorite and those continually, everyone is so excited to uh, take part in. And then also thank you to community service staff for sending out that handy calendar because that has been saving my life lately with uh, keeping track of stuff. And that's all I got for you. So lots of fun things. I'm looking forward to all the fun things we have coming up in uh, June and then the summer season and the concerts and the movies and all that fun stuff. Yes. Well, congratulations on selling out the dirt camp. Um, drink lots of water and um, clean your shoes <laughs> and allergy pills. No, that's great. It's great to see all the activities. Really excited for moving uh, the movies in the park and the concerts and all the activities coming into the city and summer weather. And um, so great work, everyone. Have a great month and we'll see you next time. Thank you for that. And Commissioner Burrell, thank you for those reminders. Yes, lots of exciting things happening. I am going to be sad at the name change. <laughs> Is it still the opportunity to go nay? I don't know. <laughs> but I just love the word community in it because I think that really reflects what we do. We are um, advocates in the community. We are ambassadors for this work and bringing that love, um, you know, we're vessels for that. So if I could advocate for the word community to stick around, 
that is my ploy for there. Okay. Um, and the transportation changes. Yes, I noticed I could not make a U-turn in the village. It was absolutely devastating. <laughs> But it was very exciting seeing the partitions up and the work getting done. We've been talking about these things and to see them actually happening is exciting. And and that's another sandwich board oh. situation. The little sandwich boards are in the village to take the survey. And when I've been down there, I've seen a lot of people actually pulling out their camera phones and, and scanning the QR code. So I just try to be like, isn't it great how much safer these streets are? You should take that survey. Awesome. Very awesome. And for those of you who don't know what a sandwich board is, because I thought that Commissioner Burrow was talking about food. We call them A-frames. Thank you. Yes, because I thought they had lunch but, and sandwiches and somebody brought lettuce and someone brought the meat. Now I get it. So we're on the same page. A-frames. A-frames. And we're the, the department that prints usually the, the information on there that goes on to those A-frames. We have a Great. plotter that does that. So awesome. Now we know we're on the same page. <laughs> um, the The calendar is exciting and it's coming to a close for this uh, current term. We are going to be welcoming some newbies to this podium in just a few weeks. So we're excited to have our newbies uh, join us for that newbie, newbie. Well, that's when. Yeah. Newbie. Right. Right. Thank you. I have nothing else to say. I want to invite John. Just uh, real quick, uh, we'll be sending out uh, an email asking for you guys to sign up for who wants to speak um, at the concerts to do the announcements uh, during that time. And um, I had something that just left me. Oh, we will be doing another ribbon cutting for Mita and, um, and the uh, bus plaza. Um, I don't know if they date they have selected yet or whatever, but I believe it might be in the evening hours uh, to do that ribbon cutting. We're pretty close. I think in the next two three weeks uh, it will be completed. I don't know if this week the shades uh, sales did not go up. Oh, so I won't bring that up for Stephen. Okay, awesome. And yeah, that the note to the calendar was yes, a thank you. I absolutely love, love it. Love it. So um, with that being said, are there any additional comments before we close the period? This meeting is adjourned, 8.08 p.m. <laughs>